Now let's look at our double argument properties. And what I mean by that is, what is the sine of a double angle 2a, or the cosine of 2a, or the tangent of 2a? Well, we can take the sine of 2a and rewrite that as the sine of a plus a. Sine of a plus a is a composite argument, and we can apply our composite argument property there, where the sine of an angle plus an angle is the sine of the first angle times the cosine of the second angle, plus the sine of the second angle times the cosine of the first angle, which can be simplified to 2 sine a cosine a in this case. So the sine of 2a can be written as 2 sine a cosine a. If we apply the same principles to the cosine of 2a and think of it as a plus a and expand and simplify, you'll see that the cosine of 2a simplifies to cosine squared a minus sine squared a. The actual proof I will be leaving to you as a homework problem. Now, cosine squared and sine squared can also be rewritten using the Pythagorean property. So if I replaced the sine squared with 1 minus cosine squared, and simplified the expression, we could see that the cosine of 2a would become 2 cosine squared a minus 1. Or, if I replace the cosine squared with 1 minus sine squared a, then my expression would simplify to 1 minus 2 sine squared a. So, the cosine of 2a can actually have three possible substitutions or representations. Cosine squared a minus sine squared a, 2 cosine squared a minus 1, or 1 minus 2 sine squared a. The tangent of 2a could be rewritten as 2 tangent a over 1 minus tangent squared a. If we applied the same principle that 2a could be rewritten as a plus a and use the composite argument for the tangent of 2a. Let's look at the half argument properties, where we're trying to find new expressions for the sine of 1 half a, or the cosine of 1 half a, or the tangent of 1 half a, in terms of the original angle a. So for the sine of 1 half a, we're going to actually start with a double angle property, the cosine of 2a, where the cosine of 2a is equal to 1 minus 2 sine squared a, as we just discovered. Now, if this holds true, where the cosine of twice the original angle is 1 minus 2 sine squared of the original angle, I could replace the 2a and the a with a and 1 half a. So the cosine of a is equal to 1 minus 2 sine squared 1 half a. And that's going to be true because 2a and a, the relationship, the relationship between 2a and a is the same relationship between a and 1 half a. Now, I'm going to take this new expression and solve for the sine of 1 half a. So I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides and get minus 1 plus cosine a is equal to negative 2 sine squared of 1 half a. And then I'm going to divide both sides by negative 2 and get 1 half minus 1 half cosine a is equal to sine squared of 1 half a. And since I'm looking for just sine of 1 half a, not sine squared of 1 half a, I'm going to take the square root of both sides. So I will get 
sine of 1 half a is equal to plus or minus the square root of 1 half minus 1 half cosine of a. In a few minutes, we'll look at how we choose between the plus or the minus for any particular value of a. So we've established that the sine of 1 half a is equal to plus or minus the square root of 1 half times 1 minus cosine a. And by similar logic, we could prove that the cosine of 1 half a is equal to plus or minus the square root of 1 half times 1 plus cosine a. And our tangent of 1 half a can be shown to be equal to these three different representations, plus or minus the square root of 1 minus cosine a over 1 plus cosine a, or 1 minus cosine a over sine a, or sine a over 1 plus cosine a.